I, I, uh, I didn't want to give you a jump scare right off the bat, but there you go. <laughs> so, God, that is a terrifying picture. I mean, it, it really looks like something out of a horror movie, and it is. I mean, frankly, it is. Um, I want to talk about the Iraq War, okay? Uh, I mean, there's several things I want to say here. So, you know, the Iraq War started on March uh, 19th, uh, March 20th, so, I mean, on, on the eve of, of, of uh, you know, the... The 20th and, and you had this shock and awe operation. Do you remember that with um, the scenes of, of uh, Baghdad with the, you know, airstrikes commencing and uh, the, the plumes of smoke? And I mean, it, it's, it's awful, right? And you had this harrowing speech with George Bush where he's sitting there. And, and I did a like, a, I've taken that speech. I've done a cut of it if, on my channel or on Twitter. You can find it. Uh, and, you know, it's it's just uh, everything he said um, is the opposite of what of what the U.S. led coalition did, right? I mean, yeah, <laughs> the motherfucker is a liar. Wow. But I, I have so much to say. You have to bear with me. I have so much to say about this. You know, the Iraq War. Um, I think this really kind of uh, opened my eyes as a kid because you know it's like. This is really something that that made me realize, like, OK, the, the entire media, they're just fucking liars. You know, they, they're they're all working together. The Bush and Blair governments are lying uh, They're They're just it, it's insane because, you know, you, you had this uh, this mass media brainwashing every single day. Weapons of mass destruction, weapons of mass destruction, weapons of mass destruction. And, and in the UK, they had their own brand of it, right? Like 45 minutes away from attack. I mean, it was fucking endless, right? And, and even as a kid, like, I knew, okay, something big is, is coming. Because I was, I was held, this is 2003, right? 2002, 2003, so I don't know, like, I'm like 10, 11, something like that. And, you know, I, I, I remember all of this stuff, and, like, it, it, it's... I, I, think, I think it's the worst atrocity of the 21st century. I, re I really believe that. I believe that deep down. And, and, and not deep down, overtly, I'm telling you. I think it's the worst thing that's happened this century. You know? And it's, it, it's not just the lies, it's the atrocities. Like, th there are things that, that I've read that I've, um, uh, you know, there are things that have happened in, in the Iraq war that are so awful, I, I can't even, t like, I, I don't even want to say it. I couldn't finish reading them. Right? Um, it, it, there's just so much wrong with, with, God, I don't even know where to start. I feel like my, I, I, it's, it's too much. So I, I just wanted to show you a couple of things. I mean, you know, like, I, 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 to this day, I'm still astounded that, you know, Colin Powell, he, he went to the UN and he brought a fucking cartoon slideshow with him, like a PowerPoint presentation with cartoons in it, right? He went to the UN Security Council and he gave this, this speech. You remember the speech, right? Where he's holding up this, like, vial, uh, pretending that it's a chemical agent or a biological agent. I can't, I, I don't know what fucking brand of kitchen salt that was, but I mean, just... It, what a performance, right? What, what a performance. The entire thing was a performance. And he went there and he used this stupid slideshow to say that, you know, Iraq was basically, uh, you know, they had reneged on, on uh, their commitment to, uh, you know, get rid of weapons of mass destruction after 91. And, um, you know, that they had been lying to the UN. They'd been lying to the world. All, all of this stuff, right? And, and I mean, look, look at this crap. I mean... Like, they brought cartoons with them. They brought cartoons. This was their proof. Look, this is... Oh, look, it's a mobile production facility for biological agents. Who drew this shit? That's not proof. That, that, that's not proof. That doesn't mean anything. And, again, it's, it's not like because we're, we're looking at it and seeing how absurd it is. No, we know for a fact it was all lies. We, we know this for a fact. Their, their source... Uh, what was the name? We're getting Curveball. All of it was fabricated. Right. But at the time, what were they saying? They were saying it's bulletproof. Do you remember Donald Rumsfeld? I, I always used to get this mixed up. Donald Rumsfeld and, and Colin Powell, because Colin Powell is a general. Right. So I used to think, like, oh, he's a secretary of defense. No, no, it's the other way around. Rumsfeld is the one who's, you know, secretary of defense. And you have Colin Powell, who's secretary of state. So I used to, I used to get those mixed up anyway. Um, and God, the Paul Wolfowitz, that that nasty motherfucker. Oh, just <laughs> all of them are nasty. And anyway, so. 
you know, Rumsfeld was saying, oh, the evidence is, is, is bulletproof. That's the word he used. And then the Washington Post would, would report it as th this, what I'm showing you here, this fucking slide, Joe, this, this, these cartoons over here. You know what the Washington Post called that? Let me, let me show you, because you, you won't believe me otherwise. Look at this. That's what they call the shit. Irrefutable. That's the, the title of, of the article, of the headline. Irrefutable. They call this crap irrefutable. This joke over here, they called that irrefutable. That, that was their, their takeaway. I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't ask for a more obedient um, you know, uh, press corps. You, you really couldn't. It's a propaganda machine. You couldn't ask for a more obedient one. And yet Judith Miller over at the New York Times... I mean, I, I don't understand how these people are not behind, uh, you, you know, like, <laughs> I, I don't understand how, how you can do shit like that. You can participate in the killing of a million Iraqis and, 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 and the displacement of a million more. And you are not crushed by guilt, that you are not behind some kind of, uh, uh, you know, that you still ha you are still in journalism because it's not just Judith, Judith Miller. You could argue that Judith Miller, you know, she's kind of <laughs> she she's gone away. You don't you don't hear anything from her. But what about Nicole Wallace, right? Nicole Wallace, war criminal Karen, who's on MSNBC, who has a two hour slot on MSNBC. She was she was the White House communications director for George Bush. Now, arguably, you could say that she came in a bit after after the the war had already started. I mean, th does that mean anything? Uh, just for argument's sake, if I told you that. You know, uh, for example, we, we know it's not true. Goebbels was there from the beginning. But like, if Goebbels joined, you know, who's the propaganda minister for the Nazis, he, he joined in 1943 after the war started. Does that make a fucking difference? Of course not. You're still you're still complicit with this murderous regime. Right. And it's not just her. It's Shep Smith. Right. He used to be on Fox News and he, he was saying. It's he, he was on television and you would see all these Iraqis surrendering. Right. And, and being marched off, and he's saying, yeah, it's good that we're in Iraq. We're going to spread some of the love. What? Spreading the love? Like, how do these people still have careers in journalism? I don't, I don't understand this. You, you know how you, they have this ca cancel culture now? Like, if you go, oh, I, like this person tweeted uh, something bad 10 years ago, and now we have to cancel them, even if they were kids or something, whatever. It, it, you said something that is so bad, we're going to cancel you now. You're going to fire you. You have to apologize. And now you're, you're just like, you know, you're cast out from society. Okay, explain something to me. If, if this is the norm now, what's the threshold with that? Because if, if you're going to chastise people like that, you're going to quote unquote cancel them for that. What about the journalists that I just mentioned who are banging the war drums for the war in Iraq? who participated in war crimes, in mass murder, in a crime of aggression. Isn't that infinitely worse than a fucking tweet? What about them? Like, like what, what is this double standard? What is, the, what is the threshold? Explain this system to me. Explain it. I'm curious. Explain it to me. What, why is it that people who are complicit with the war machine, who are propagandists, they're, they're immune from, you know... Um, legal repercussions or you know moral repercussions any any sort of consequences anything you like they're just immune from it completely immune isn't that weird and then and then of course you know this this do you know how nowadays they have this whole fact checking thing? Like, for example, during the presidential debates, right? They would, oh, we're going to fact check Donald Trump because, you know, Donald Trump is such a notorious liar. They have to fact check him. Right. And, and after Russiagate, oh, my God, there's so much disinformation. There's so much lying. This article could be Russian disinformation. We have to fact check everything. Right. Snopes is a thing like, like all, all of this, like every every news outlet does its own variation of fact checking. Right. The CNN have their own fact check. MSNBC, the Washington Post. Where, where was this after the Iraq war? You don't think that after the Iraq war, after they, they reported all of these lies about weapons of mass destruction, that that might have been some kind of, you know, kick in the butt, some kind of wake up call like, oh, now we are going to be more rigorous in our jobs. Although one has to beg, the, you know, it begs the question, why wasn't this already the case? Since you are journalists, and like, you should be fact checking everything regardless, not just, you know, especially when you're selling a war for someone.
Yes? Crazy, right? There, there was no fact-checking culture or, or a practice emerging from that. But after Russiagate, yeah. It's <laughs> just unbelievable, right? And by, by the way, one of you posted this in the comments, like, because um, I, I, I was, I was, I said, look, this is an actual cartoon drawing that Colin Powell brought to the United Nations Security Council as proof that Iraq had biological weapons. And, and one of you posted this in the comments. <laughs> Don't forget the evidence of advanced conventional weaponry. Yeah. But you know what's messed up? Like, I, I, I know I'm uh, like, it's so ridiculous that you laugh. But you, man, it, it's it's like it's insulting. I mean, people died about over this. P people literally died. And I'm not just talking about died like like as in, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm talking about horrific shit. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, it, it, it's really upsetting um, and, and I, I don't know how to how to get it out because there, there are so many things I want to say. I mean, for example, you remember the torture at Abu Ghraib, right? At this this prison. And you saw this man um, um, who was wearing a, a hood and, you know, he's in this position like that. And they, they've got these wires hanging down to electrocute him. It, it, I mean, just like. Right here. Yeah, I, again, I'm not sure if I can play the clip because I, I don't know about copyright and stuff, but I mean, I mean th this is horrendous, right? Look, look, this, this, I mean, this video breaks my heart. I, 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 I don't know what to say. Th th this man, I mean, I've cried so many times about this, uh, about this video. And, and this is one man, right? Ali al qaisa or, or excuse me, Ali al qaisi And he, he says in the video, like, he, he's, he's so traumatized from the waterboarding that he can't have a bathtub in his, his bathroom now. I, I mean... I, I don't understand, you know, I, I don't understand how images like this can come out. This is not one image. There are many, many, many more images from Abu Ghraib that are, that are even worse, more graphic than this. Although, I, I, again, I don't, I don't even see how one can be worse than the other. This is all just so fucked up. It's, it's, it's just, it's, this is evil. Do you, do you know that that word is overused, evil? This is evil. This is evil. I, I, I don't mean that in like a theological sense. I, just... This is evil. What, what you take that for, you know, your, your interpretation of it, I think this fits everyone's interpretation. That is fucking evil. What happened at that jail? And, I mean, I, I don't understand how, how the Bush government survived that shit. How any government can survive that. I mean, this is a, this in of itself, now, you, you gotta keep in mind, this, when did the images of Abu Ghraib come out again? 2006, if I'm not mistaken? Don't quote me on that, but, but my point is that this is already after the war on Afghanistan has started, the war in Iraq has started, right? Which are scandals in of themselves. How does this happen and, and that government survives? There, you know, there are governments that have been overthrown by their own people, right? For, for much less than this. This is not just a, these are not war crimes. This is beyond that. We are, we are going into another realm here. Do you understand? And again, I'm not sure of what I can show because YouTube loves to censor uh, everything. And I, I don't know how I'm supposed to do my fucking job as a journalist if I can't show you and report on, you know, atrocities. I mean, what, what is, you know. So I don't know if I can show this picture to you, but there is um, uh, a picture also from, this, you know, from Abu Ghraib where you have this, uh, this woman. I'm not going to say her name because she doesn't deserve it. I, I, I'm always conflicted about that. If we should name and shame, you know, piece of shit war criminals like that, or we should not, uh, you know, uh, validate them in any sense. I, I don't know. But I, I'm sure many of you have seen this picture and she's just smiling and she's she's posing over a dead body and she's just smiling at the camera. And she's not the only one, right? There are so many more images. It's so grotesque. And, you know, that that, that particular picture... I'm, look, I'm just going to try and show you half of it because, again, I don't know about YouTube, but you can, you can see how... I mean, this is sadistic. The, the, there's something wrong 
with, with this person, right? And, and the, the, the dead man is Manal al-Jamadi. And the Obama administration, the Obama administration decided to um, shut down the, the cases because they were investigating two murders. They, they, I always love this, how they investigate like two murders. Like when there's, it's like, uh, we don't even know the real amount. Like it, it scores. And, and they're investigating two of them, one in Afghanistan and Jamadi's the, the second one in Iraq. He, he died in 2003 in, in Abu Ghraib, right? And he was in CIA custody. And so the Obama administration was, was openly pressuring the DOJ to shut down this investigation. Okay, and they did. They did. So that's sealed forever. Like George Bush, the Bush administration, they're, they're not going to be prosecuted. They're never going to be prosecuted for, for torture. And that's just two cases. Those are two cases. We don't even know the real number. The ones we already know, I mean, it's so much, it's unbelievable. And I, I know this is kind of like a long segment, but I mean, for fuck's sake, if, if there's anything that deserves a long segment, I think it's the Iraq war, right? It's been going on for 18 years now. I mean, I, I, know, I know they love to say that, oh, it ended in 2011. No, it fucking didn't. Iraq is still under occupation. Don't give me that bullshit, all right? Iraq, does, Iraq still doesn't know peace. So as far as I'm concerned, that war is not over, and any rational, sensible person would agree. So, you know, and again, this is not just about the Americans, right? The British played such a huge fucking role in selling this war, in, in participating in this war. So the British media, which is, I mean, one of the most disgusting uh, uh, establishments uh, <laughs> on the face of the planet, it's, it's, it's a criminal enterprise. They helped sell this shit. They, they, they milked it. I mean, like, like you would not believe. Just like, just like the, the Americans. And then, you know, they, they invaded with the, with the Americans, right? They invaded Afghanistan. They invaded Iraq. And I think, if I recall correctly, uh, you know, the Americans, they were mainly in Fallujah, uh, Baghdad, um, Mosul, and, and, you know, the British, they were more in, in, in Basra, right? And so there's, a, there's one guy, uh, his name is Baha Musa, and this guy's 26 years old. He, he's a hotel receptionist. And... The, the British, they arrested him for, for no reason, right? Because when we say arrested, <laughs> I mean, de detained is probably the right word, kidnapped. I don't know what, what you want to say here. But they, they took him into their, their custody and they beat the shit out of him. They, they, they literally beat him to death. I think he had something like 93. Um, uh, if you go look at the, uh, it's, it's, it's horrible. I, I don't, I don't, it's, it. The guy had, had 93 injuries on his corpse, right? That's how severely beaten he was. They just fucking murdered him. And one person goes to jail for one year. So you have a corporal. And again, I don't know if I should say his name or not. Again, I, I don't know about this. Maybe you guys can, can tell me. Uh, but, you know, this bastard, he's the only one who goes to jail and he goes for one year. I mean, what is that? How can you mur how can you get you know a one year sentence in jail for murdering someone? Can you imagine if an Iraqi had murdered a, a British citizen? Do you think they would just get one year? <laughs> I think we both know the answer to that. So I mean, this is just there, it, it it shows you clearly there there's no accountability, right? Neither for the government nor the military. There is no respect for, for the, the lives of Arabs, for Iraqis. And again, we can say the same things about Palestinians, how they're treated under the Israelis. But, but in the context here, I mean, I, I don't know what justice system, so-called justice system, can send a murderer to jail for one year. I mean, it just shows you that they just don't value the lives of Iraqis. And it's, it's not even, it's not even as, like, as if it was something, I, 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 again, it, it still would not make it any better. But this was sadistic, right? This wasn't something that happened by accident or it was, it was you know, uh, uh, done quickly as they say. No, no, this was sadistic. They beat this man to death. They tortured him. One year in jail. And you have seven other uh, military personnel that are let off the hook. I mean, this, this is shocking. Look, look at this, this guy is a family man. This guy's 26 years old, younger than me, man. What, what, what the fuck did he do to deserve that? Can someone explain that to me? And this is one man. This is one person. I do not, I have no connection with him uh, at all besides 
perhaps the fact that I'm Syrian and he's Iraqi. That, that, that's it. We're neighbors, right? I, I don't know this man, and, and it breaks my heart. And, and he's just one person out of so many that have suffered because of this fucking war. Criminal. Criminal. All of it. And, and this one, I mean, Jesus Christ, this, this massacre, the Mahmoudiya massacre, I, I'm not even going to tell you what, what happened there. I cannot, I, I cannot read it. I cannot finish reading that. You know what I just told you, right? How the, the Obama administration, uh, the British, uh, the Australians also have reported on that. They, they don't punish their, their own soldiers for war crimes. Even when it's 100% clear they're guilty. So, just to give you an indication of how bad this Mahmoudiyah massacre was, what, one of the people involved, got a, he got a life sentence. And I think another one got 100 years in jail. So just think how fucked up that thing was that they were actually punished for it. And, 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 and I, I don't think that that's even uh, 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 adequate because the family, uh, one of the family members said that he, he wanted the death penalty. And, and in the state where, where they were prosecuted in the United States, th that was an option. They could have been given the death penalty and they were not. Right. So just think how fucked up that was that they were actually given life sentences. I mean, I'm, I, I, that, that is, is uh, I think it's the worst thing I've ever read. I, it, it's not a war crime. It's not, it, it, it's beyond that. It's, 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 you know, the word terrorism or uh, horror is not enough. I, I, I I'm. <sighs> and then, of course, you have the Haditha massacre, right? You had, um, I think it was about 25 uh, Iraqis that were, that were just, they were just massacred, right? Several families. So you had um, a roadside bomb, I think, that killed one Marine. And then uh, an, another, an, another company, I think it was Kilo, Kilo Squad, they came in and then they, they just massacred an entire uh, bu bunch of families, right? Inclu including babies, including... I, I mean, it's horrific, right? And, and not a single fucking person went to jail. You, you think I'm making this up, right? You think I'm, I'm exaggerating or something. I'm really not. I'm really not. Okay? I'm trying to zoom in here because this is November 19th, 2005. 24 Iraqi civilians murdered. Not a single fucking person went to jail. Not a single one. There's a grandfather, right? Abdul Hamid Hassan Ali. Grandfather, father, and husband. He dined with nine rounds in the chest and abdomen. They, they killed a four-year-old, Abdullah Walid, a fucking four-year-old. This is, an, they wiped out an entire family for no reason. Look, it, look how many houses. They just literally went from house to house murdering fucking civilians, murdering Iraqis. Look, look at this. Ten years old, five years old, three years old. They, they killed all of these brothers. What is this? How, how do you justify this shit? I mean, I'm, I'm just... Um, th th this is a puddle. Uh, sorry, this is a, a drop in the ocean. It's a drop in the ocean c compared to, you know, everything that's happened. And, and it's already so bad. I, I don't think we will ever understand or, or know uh, the true extent of what happened in Iraq. Because you have to keep in mind, this one, the Haditha massacre, was a cover-up. They tried to cover it up. It's only because of a Times journalist that they actually found out what happened, right? They tried to cover it up. And so who knows what else they've covered up, right? And, and again, the Mahmoudiyah thing, I mean, you know, I, I, I feel physically ill when I, when I see the collateral murder video from WikiLeaks. And, and that Mahmoudiyya massacre makes the collateral murder video look like, again, I, I don't want to downplay it because it, we can't, of course, but, but it, it, it's so much worse. That's my point. Think, think. And then, of course, Trump, this, this piece of shit, he, he pardoned those Blackwater uh, mercenaries for what they did in um, uh, Nisur uh, Square, was it? Nusir, excuse me. No, it is Nisur. I got it right. <laughs> it's, it's Nisur Square. So uh, this was, uh, you know, again, this was an instance where they just unloaded on, on, on an entire, uh, you know, uh, 
a, a jam-packed street in broad daylight, right? And he pardoned them. He gave them a pardon. Donald Trump, like the piece of shit that he is, right? They, they, they killed 17 and injured 20 in 2007. Blackwater, this private mercenary group. They're not called uh, Academy. And he pardoned them, right? I mean, it, it, it's just horrible. It, it, it's just awful. I, I really, uh, it, it breaks my heart, man. I, 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 um, again, I, I, I don't think you can really compare, uh, always. I, I view the war in Syria as kind of an extension of the war in Iraq. I, I think a lot of people do because, you know, when you create this power vacuum, that's, that's how you get ISIS. That's how you get all of these, uh, uh, you know, uh, extremists coming out of the woodwork. And that's, I mean, that's not me saying that. That's, you, you can go and listen to the CIA uh, interrogators who interrogated Saddam, right? And they, they, he told them that shit. And they agree with it. And a, a, anyone who understands anything about the Middle East knows that's the truth, right? Uh, you, you remove someone like Saddam, you remove someone like Assad, and then you get extremism. You get people like Al-Qaeda, you get Al-Nusra, you get Hayat Tahrir al-Sham. And yeah, so just to go back to my original point, I mean, again, I'm not Iraqi. I've never been to Iraq. Unfortunately, I'd, I'd love to visit one day. Um, but, uh, you know, as much as the war in Syria hurts me on a personal level, I, I still think Iraq is worse than anything. I mean, but, but it, it's, it's all the same in, in a way, right? They're, I mean, they're all connected. It's all, this is all part of the so-called war on terror. And this is something that you have to remember because, so before my internet got cut off, like I was saying, um, you know, the, the, the Iraq war is just, it's a rabbit hole of atrocities. And, and I think, again, that's, that's an understatement. You know, this is, um, it's so bad. And you, you look, for example, at Fallujah, right? Fallujah is a, is a city in Iraq that is, uh, well, it used to be very beautiful. Uh, it's nicknamed the city of, of mosques, right? Because, um, hold on, let me show you why. You're going to understand why. There you go. It has tons of minarets, right? Tons of mosques. So it's very famous for that. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the Americans completely destroyed it. They, they destroyed it twice, actually. If I'm not mistaken, there were two battles of Fallujah. And, um, you know, not just the Americans, but of course... Uh, Al-Qaeda and ISIS afterwards, which are <laughs> products of America and, and Britain. Um, and it's, it, you know, they, they fought over that city twice and they used white phosphorus, which is, you know, these are chemical weapons. They're banned. But of course, the United States doesn't care. Um, they also used um, depleted uranium. Now, this is radioactive stuff, right? And... The reason they would use this in, in you know, um, uh, tank shells, in armor piercing rounds, uh, in, uh, you know, any sort of rocket propelled grenade, they would use depleted uranium because it makes it pierce armor more effectively, which sounds great, you know, from, I guess, a technical point of view. But you know what it's done to people? Do you know what it's done to the people of Iraq, to, of the, to the people of Fallujah? To this day, we're in the year 2021 now. There are children being born with birth defects that are so horrible. I mean, I, I can't like. It's heartbreaking. It, it's heartbreaking. The, the birth defect rate in Fallujah is higher than it was in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which, you know, the two cities that the United States nuked in August 1945 in Japan. It's higher than that. Have most of you actually heard of this before? I'm not blaming you. I'm just trying to highlight the fact that this is not talked about. And, you know, uh, you'll have to forgive me. I, 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 I can't remember for the who wrote this. I think it was Counterpunch. I, I, I don't remember. I'm sorry. I, but uh, uh, someone was commenting on my thread and made the excellent point that what the United States did was, was double the atrocity because they also put sanctions on Iraq, right? So that, you know... You have a child who has birth defects or, you know, your DNA has been, been corrupted. You've perhaps developed an illness yourself from the depleted uranium. 
and you can't actually treat any of it because there's a there's sanctions on the country. You can't bring in medicine. You can't bring in medical supplies. I mean, this is this is a fucking weapon of mass destruction. OK, and, and that's that's not an understatement that that's, you know, uh, sorry, that's not an overstatement. That's really what it is. The, the pictures are so horrifying and, and heartbreaking. And, uh, you, you know, I, I again, what, my, my point here, what I'm trying to say is that there are so many things that have happened in Iraq that are not talked about enough, that are not reported in the media, that are. They're beyond just war crimes. It's 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 le legitimately terrorism. It's it's. I, I don't know how to describe it. I don't I don't know if there's a word for that except evil. And it's it's so horrendous. And like I said, you have all of these journalists or, you know, so-called journalists that are they're propagandists. They, they are mouthpieces for the war machine. Right. That are still working today in, in, on TV, like it, it's unbelievable. And, you know, they whitewash people like George Bush, like Ellen brings George Bush on her show or uh, I think it was Colbert. I could be mistaken. I, I don't know which one of <laughs> which one of these talking heads brought Rumsfeld on his show. Donald Rumsfeld. I mean. Or Colin Powell. Colin Powell was speaking at the DNC convention. We covered that together. Colin fucking Powell, the guy I just showed you who brought cartoons to the United Nations as proof of weapons of mass destruction. I mean, you you should be ridiculed to the end of time for having done that shit. But he's now like a keynote speaker at the at the Democratic Party's convention. What, what is going on here? What is going on here? And then, you know, there was a, uh, an article I saw the other day. Um... Some local newspaper in Texas was doing an interview with George Bush, and he said that he was he was horrified by the, the, the scenes at the Capitol on January 6th. I mean, how, how do you. <sighs> this motherfucker is the devil. He is the devil, and he's talking about being appalled by what happened on January 6th? What, look at what you have done. Look, look at the shit that you did. You are the, the like, if you compile the list of all, what, what, how many people are we on Earth now? Eight billion, nine billion? I don't, I don't know what it is anymore. Um, if you compile the list, okay, of, and, and, and you went all the way to the bottom of that list of people who should be talking about atrocities, George Bush would be right at the bottom. Like, you are the last motherfucker alive who should be talking about uh, being shocked at, at, you know, scenes of violence and, and <laughs> especially in, 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 a, in a, you know, a political context. I mean, you, you are go to hell, seriously, go to hell. And Joe Biden, of course, you know, who's president now, this motherfucker, I mean, this guy has been wanting to go to war with Iraq since 1998. And if you go and you look at the um, the Senate hearings that they had conducted, one of the people who spoke there, who who actually uh, you know, uh, I I interviewed him for my episode which came out yesterday. His name is Scott Ritter, okay. And Scott Ritter, he was a uh, United Nations weapons inspector. I mean, chief weapons inspector, by the way. And I mean, th this guy knows his stuff. Do you know what I'm saying? And not just any weapons inspector who was in Iraq. This guy was in charge of dismantling Iraq's uh, Scud missiles and, you know, making sure that they don't have weapons of mass destruction from 1991 to 98. If anyone knows their shit about Iraq, it's him. Like, literally, there was no one more qualified. And I, I, it was a real privilege to talk to him. And, you, you know, go watch the episode because it's, it's about the Iran nuclear deal, right? So just type Richard Medhurst, the communique, uh, and... It, uh, Iran nuclear deal, it'll come up immediately, right? So that's that's the last episode I did just now for Press TV. And, I mean, he was in the Senate with Joe Biden, right? And, I mean, the guy was just twisting his words to, to, to make it look like, oh, well, you know, you've made us come to our milk now. And, uh, you know, basically you, you, you've given us what we need to make a decision. And it, it just shows you how bloodthirsty Biden was back, all the way back in 98. And then, of course, in 2002, he's holding these Senate hearings that are a, a complete sham. And Scott Ritter is trying to warn people like, yo, there are no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. I know because I, I was in charge of overseeing that. <laughs> there are no fucking weapons of mass destruction. And no one would listen. And this piece of shit is now the president, Joe Biden, this motherfucker. I mean, just the things that I've told you about now, right? about what happened in Iraq.
the birth defects, the Mahmoudiyah massacre, the Haditha massacre, Nisur Square, Abu Ghraib. I, this is like, this is not even one tenth of one percent of what happened in Iraq. And in, instead of rejecting all of these propagandists and these politicians who helped start that war, people were coming here and saying that you should go and vote for Joe Biden. What, what is wrong with you? Like, it's not just a question of his policies are complete shit and he's a fucking liar. No, no, no. Look what he did to Iraq. Look what he helped do in Iraq. How dare you? What is wrong with you? How can you pardon him for that shit? How can you pardon him for that shit and, and make the case for him? How dare you? Have, have you lost all sense of morality? Do you, do you not understand what happened in Iraq? That, that's the only explanation that I can find, that, that people just don't understand. They just don't get it. And that's just one thing. We were, never mind all the other things, you know, in his so-called career. So it's beyond heartbreaking. It, it is. It is truly. Again, I say this. It's the worst atrocity of the 21st century: the invasion of Iraq. Because, uh, you know, I, I, I just, I'm, I'm speechless. There are, and all of it is connected, really. If you, if you want, you can say the war on terror. I guess because that's been their justification for all of it. Right. And again, I don't know where it cut off before when I was talking, but uh, the point that I was trying to make is that, you know, they the U.S. regime, they were making two cases to push the war in Iraq. One was that Saddam has weapons of mass destruction, which is a fucking lie. And I mean, yeah, he did <laughs> in the first Gulf War because the United States sold them to him and, and he was gassing Kurds and he was gassing the Iranians. Right. Professor Merendi that I've had on the show, you know, he was fighting that war from, uh, uh, when was it again, 80 to, eight, uh, to 88? And, I mean, he, he suffered a chemical gas attack by, from chemical weapons that were sold to Saddam by the U.S. There's a video of Donald Rumsfeld coming in and shaking hands with Saddam, right? So they gave him those weapons. And, uh, but we're talking about 2002, 2003. So in 2002, 2003, they're lying. There are no more weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. There, uh, there's nothing. And the second case that they're trying to make is that Saddam Hussein is linked to Al-Qaeda. And not only that, but he's going to give them weapons of mass destruction as well. He's going to give nuclear weapons to Al-Qaeda. I mean, I've explained to you multiple times how absurd this is because Saddam Hussein, I mean, the, the, the guy is a Ba'athist. You know, it's a Ba'athist regime. They, they're, it's a secular regime. They're, a com they're completely opposed to you know, uh, uh, people like Al-Qaeda, they're, they're enemies. I mean, th this is what I was saying before. You didn't have uh, uh, any kind of, uh, you know, extremism under uh, Saddam. I mean, yeah, sure, you have the Saddam regime, but you don't have this kind of shit. You, you don't have this sectarian violence, which was fueled by the United States. Yeah, you had sectarian issues, 100%, but not on the scale that they are trying to make you believe because they go back to this lie that, oh, you know, like... The Arabs, oh, they're so uncivilized there, boy. Always, always fighting between themselves over religion. No, this is horseshit. No, no, no. The, the West, the United States, the CIA, MI6, they prey on this. They exacerbate it. I'm not saying that, like, this is not speculation. Go, that's from WikiLeaks. That, that's from the U.S. Embassy in Damascus in 2006. They're saying we have to prey on the... Often, they, they acknowledge in the cable that it's, it's exaggerated. It's not real. We have to prey on Sunni fears of Shia influence from Iran. Like, they know this shit. They, they provoke sectarian violence on purpose. And then they turn around and say, hey, that's got nothing to do with us. No, 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 these are just savage Arabs. Fuck you. So don't, don't, don't ever buy that bullshit from anyone who says that kind of stuff. And, uh, it, you know, people are not inherently violent and, and sectarian. Uh, there, there was, there was uh, you know, I can speak for Syria. Just Syria alone, I can tell you that... You did not have this, right? So they lied through their goddamn teeth. And again, I, I know this is a long segment. It, it's important, though, because, you know, we're 18 years later and the war is still, you know, it, they're still under occupation, the Iraqis. And they voted, you, you know, this is, again, one of the big ironies. You have the U.S. that invades Iraq to give them democracy, right? So-called democracy. And then now that they have a parliament uh, that is, uh, you know, accepted by the United States, um, they don't listen to it. Because after Trump assassinated Soleimani, the Iraqi parliament voted to kick out 
all foreign troops. Do you think the Americans listen to that? Do you think the British listen to that? They're still there. They're still there. Right? And this excuse that they're there just to fight ISIS, this is horseshit. This is fucking horseshit. They, they are illegally occupying Iraq. End of story. I don't, I don't care what justification they give. They're illegally occupying Iraq. All right? And this is 18 years later, and people just forget about it, and they act like, you know, it's, it's nothing. No, it's, it's more than... It, it's the worst thing that's happened in this century, I think, honestly. Um, and it, it's horrible. It's heartbreaking. It, it's heartbreaking. It really is. That, that country, what they did to Iraq, uh, I mean... The, the, the politicians responsible, they should be facing a, a fucking, you know, crimes against humanity tribunal, just like you saw in Nuremberg after World War II. And when they held that in Nuremberg, I mean, they went after everyone, right? They, of course, they tried to get as many from senior Nazi leadership as they could, and they had people like Göring, who was the head of the, the Air Force. But... Uh, they didn't stop there, right? They went after everyone, like mayors, uh, you know, judges, everyone who was involved, because that was a murderous, genocidal regime. The, the Nazis, all coll the entire apparatus was murderous and genocidal. And so my point here is that if you were going to, I think Noam Chomsky has said this before, right? The war in Iraq, the invasion of Iraq in 2003, these crimes that were committed against Iraq, this is exactly what the Allies prosecuted the Nazis for. It's the same shit. So, you know, Joe Biden, I mean, th this motherfucker should be in a dock, right? In a jail cell. He, he should be locked away for what he did to Iraq. Every, every single person who participated in that shit, they have, they have so much blood on their hands. And it makes me angry. It makes me upset. It makes me really, um, you know. So, yeah. that Again, it's... Uh, It's ridiculous. And, and, and ironically, I remembered one thing. Uh, I think this was in... Well, I, I remember they captured Saddam in December of 2003, right? It was in December in any case. And I remember that day. And like we had to do some kind of project in English class. And uh, instead of working on it, I was, I was surfing on MSN.com at the time, right? uh for news because i wanted to see what was happening with saddam what like i wanted to know what was happening with the war and i <laughs> i got into shit for that but it's kind of it's kind of ironic thinking back like yeah i actually ended up having to you know i, I actually ended up doing uh journalism uh, and uh you know it's kind of sad that that war is still a thing and iraq has still not recovered right And one more thing that I would add, which was really eye-opening. Um, if you go and watch Once Upon a Time in Iraq, and again, I don't agree 100% with, with that production, because, I mean, the entire premise, like, the BBC helped sell that war. So if they come now after 20 years and do a documentary about, like, oh, how, how bad the war was for Iraqis, like, yeah, you should have said that before you were fucking selling the war, not after the fact, after you have you were complicit in that. But anyway... Uh, there was a part where this Marine is talking about how they were attacking, again, I think it was Fallujah. And, um, you know, you, he said, like, you had all the minarets, uh, uh, it, it, like, this is at the crack of dawn. And the minarets, you know, they were the mosques were calling the people of the city to come defend the city. And I was like, man, like, this, it's just not, it hasn't changed. Like, this is exactly like a thousand years ago when the Crusaders were coming to this exact same spot, to the Levant to Jerusalem, to Syria, to Damascus, and, and trying to conquer us. Nothing has changed. Like, it, 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 the same thing, right? Unbelievable.